21st century learners and welcome to a brand new day of fun field learning experience as we discover various literatures from the Philippines and from around the globe. Before we start, make sure that you have with you the copy of your module, your notebook, and a pen. Let's begin! For lesson 1, we will discuss the geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to the contemporary. After going through this module, you are expected to learn the following. 1. To identify geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to contemporary and representative texts from the regions. 2. Is to write a close analysis and critical interpretation of literary texts. And number three, to show a sense of adaptability of the Philippine literary history. 21st century literature from the Philippines and from the world aims to engage you in appreciation and critical study of the 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world, encompassing their various dimensions, genres, elements, structures, contexts, and traditions. And now for the initial activity, I want you to ponder on the following questions. Question number one. What do you know about the different literary periods in Philippine literature? Question number two. What are the essential elements of the literary pieces under different periods of literature? Now I will give you 10 seconds to answer that on your mind. Ready? Timer starts now. Time's up! Okay, so the answers to the question will be highlighted later as we move towards today's lesson. Now here's a short preview. Did you know that our forefathers already had their literature, which reflected in their customs and traditions? They had their alphabet even before they had been colonized. The Spanish friars burned their alphabet in the belief that they were works of the devil or were written on materials that quickly perished like the barks of tree, dried leaves, and bamboo cylinders which could not have remained firm even if efforts were made to preserve them. Our unique geographic location is the reason why we are rich. Therefore, even before we were colonized, literature already existed. However, series of changes were adopted as a product of the influences of the conquerors to us. This also shaped and formed the kind of literature that we have today. And this lesson will help us to understand the evolution that took place from then up to now. Let's take a look now at what our literature seems before the Spanish colonization. The pre-Spanish literature is characterized into three forms. One is the folk tales. Second is the epic age, and then we have the folk songs. Folk tales are made up of stories about life, adventure, love, horror, and humor where one can derive lessons. It typically consists of a story passed down from generation to generation orally. Folk tales are stories that grew out of the lives and imaginations of the people or folk. They have always been children's favorite type of folk literature. An example of this is the moon and the sun. The second one is the epic age. Epics are long narrative poems in which a series of heroic achievements or events, usually of a hero, are dealt with at length. A study revealed that the Philippines' folk epics like those found in Asia 
are open about a quest for a wife as well as the various ordeals linked to the founding of a family, hamlet, tribe, or a kingdom. The narratives would include voyages, here on earth, sky, sea, and even in the underworld to allow the hero or the heroine to overcome the challenges faced. One famous example of this is Biyag ni Lamang or The Life of Lamang written by a blind Ilocano named Pedro Bucane. And then we have the folk songs. These are one of the oldest forms of Philippine literature that emerged in the pre-Spanish period. These songs mirror the early forms of culture. Many of these have 12 syllables. Common forms are kundiman, tagumintang or tagumpay, ang dalit or imno, ang oyayi or hele, dayana, solirening, and the talindaw. The Spanish colonization of the Philippines started in 1565. During the time of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, the first Spanish governor general in the Philippines. Literature started to flourish during this time. Literature in this period may be classified as religious prose and poetry and secular prose and poetry. Religious literature involves man-made doctrines based on his practical beliefs of what God approves of and what he does not. It is literature based around a religious culture as well. Secular literature opposes religious literature. Secular literature is based around myths and theologies. It has nothing to do with God, Christ, or religion. It is mostly based around science or science fiction. Now here is how the Spanish colonization influenced Philippine literature. The first Filipino alphabet called Alphabet was replaced by the Roman alphabet. Also, the teaching of the Christian doctrine became the basis of religious practices. European legends and traditions brought here became assimilated in our songs, corridos, and moromoros. Contrary to the pre-Hispanic period, Fox songs manifest the artistic feelings of the Filipinos and shows their innate appreciation and love of them. The examples are Leron Leron Simpa, Pambolino Wind, Blended Soy, Sarong Bangi, and Atin Kukong Simpa. In addition, there were many recreational plays performed by Filipinos during the Spanish times. Almost all of them were in a poetic form such as Senacolo, Panunuluyan, Salubong, and Sarsuela. After 300 years of passivity under Spanish rule, the Filipino spirit reawakened when three priests, Gomez, Burgos, Zamora, were guillotined without sufficient evidence of guilt. The Spaniards were unable to suppress the tide of rebellion among the Filipinos. The once religious spirit transformed itself into one of nationalism and the Filipinos demanded changes in the government and in the church. This was known as the period of enlightenment. Filipino intellectuals educated in Europe called Ilustrados began to write about the hitch of colonization. They established a propaganda movement to spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal, Marcelo del Pinar, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Panganiban, and Pedro Patern. Some of Rizal's writings include The Noli Metangere, Mi Ultimo Adios, Sobre la Indolencia de los Filipinos, and Filipinas Dentro de Cien Años. Meanwhile, pag-ibig sa tinubuang lupa or love of country, kaingat kayo, be careful, and the salan at toksohan, prayers and jokes for some of Del Pilar's writings. Hain also wrote some, and these are Ang Prebotod, 
that he had deprived me, the child of the prior, and everything is humble or everything is mere show. Sa mga Pilipino in 1891 and talumpating pagunita kay Columbus or an operation to commemorate Columbus. Filipinos gained independence, however it was short. This time, they were placed under the American nation. Many Filipinos started writing again, and nationalism of the people remained undaunted. Filipino writers went into all forms of literature like news reporting, poetry, stories, plays, essays, and novels. Their writings clearly depicted their love of country and their longings for independence. Philippine literary production during the American period in the Philippines was spurred by two significant developments in education and culture. One is the introduction of free public instruction for all children of school age and two. The use of English as medium of instruction in all levels of education in public schools. Linguistically, Americans influenced Filipino writers to write using English language. Jose Garcia Villa became famous for his free verse. The languages used in writing were Spanish and Tagalog and the dialects of the different regions. But the writers in Tagalog continued their lamentations on the conditions of the country and their attempts to arouse love for one's native, native tongue and the writers in English imitated the themes and methods of the Americans. Past Marquez Benitez's short story, The Dead Stars, is an example of a short story published during this period. He made a landmark in combining of writing in a borrowed tongue while dwelling on Filipino customs and traditions. Philippine literature was interrupted in its development when another foreign country, Japan, conquered the Philippines between 1941 to 1945. The Philippine literature in English came to a halt. This led to all newspapers not to be circulated in the community except for Tribune and Philippine Review. During this time, there was no freedom of speech and of the press. Victoria Abelardo has described Filipino writing during the Japanese occupation as being pessimistic and bitter. There were some efforts at escapist literature, but in general, the literary output was minor and insignificant. Because of strict censorship, few literary works were printed during the war years. The common theme of most poems during the Spanish occupation was nationalism, country, love, and life in the barrios, faith, religion, and the arts. There were three types of poems emerged during this period. The haiku, the tanaga, and the karanimong anu. Haiku is a poem of free verse that the Japanese like. It was made up of 17 syllables divided into three lines. Let me read to you an example. Bayan kong mahal, buhay ay ibibigay, iyan ay tunay. The second one is the tanaga. Like the haiku, it is short, but it has measure and rhyme. Let me read an example. Pag ang sanggol ay ngumiti, nawawala ang pighati. Pag kalong mo'y sumisighi, ang pangarap na punyaki. And we also have the karaniwang anyo or the usual form. It is the conventional way of writing poem. Because of the strict prohibitions imposed by the Japanese in the writing and publishing of works in English, Philippine literature in English experienced a dark period. For the first 20 years, many books were published both in Filipino and in English. In the new Filipino literature, Philippine literature in Tagalog was revived during this period. Most themes in the writings dealt with Japanese brutalities, the poverty of life under the Japanese government, and the brave guerrilla exploits. Because of the ills of the society, 
In 1970, the youth moved to seek reforms. They started the youth activism due to domestic and worldwide causes. As the literary revolution, the youth became vocal with their sentiments. They demanded a change in the government. It was manifested in the blood demonstrations and the sidewalk expressions and also in literature. Campus newspapers showed rebellious emotions. The once aristocratic writers developed awareness for society. They held pens and wrote on placards in red, paint the equivalent of the word makibaka, meaning to dim. Then the period of the new society started. The new society tried to stop or not to fear those writings, giving bad influences on the morals of the people. Ministry of Public Affairs, established by the military government to supervise the newspapers, books, and other publications. The Carlos Palanca Awards continue to give annual awards. Poems dealt with faith, patience, regard for native culture, customs, and the beauties of nature and surroundings. Newspapers don new poems. News on economic progress, discipline, culture, tourism, and the like were favored more than the sensationalized reporting of killings, rape, and robberies. Filipinos before were hooked in reading magazines and comics. After 10 years of military rule and some changes in the life of the Filipino, which started under the new society, martial rule was at last lifted on January 2, 1981. The Philippines became a new nation, and this former President Marcos called the New Republic of the Philippines. Poems during this period of the Third Republic were romantic and revolutionary. Writers wrote openly of their criticism against the government. The supplication of the people were coached in fiery, colorful, violent, profane, and insulting language. Many Filipino songs dealt with themes that were true to life like that those of grief, poverty, aspirations for freedom, love of God, of country, and family. Many composers grieve over Ninoy's treacherous assassination composed songs. The yearly festival of Filipino films continued to be held during this period. The people's love for sex films also was elevated. Many producers took advantage of this at the expense of public morality. In campuses, newspapers were set afire to protest lack of free expression. Journalists suffered physically and otherwise. Journalists of three major dailies demanded a dialogue with their publishers to restore credibility and respectability to newspapers. Opposition tabloids flourished. They sold our papers with the red news to the star public. Hence, smart magazines like The Tic Tic, Playboy Scene, and Sakdal also played the side news. Among the well loved forms of writing which abounded during this period were those of children's stories. The Children's Communication Center, directed by poet and writer Virgilio S. Almario, already has built up an impressive collection of these kinds of books. History took another twist. Once more, the Filipinos gain its independence, which they lost 20 years ago. In four days from February 21 to 25 of 1986, the so-called people power or lakas ng bayan prevailed. In the short span of the existence of the real Republic of the Philippines, several changes already became evident. It was noticed in the new Filipino songs, newspapers, speeches, and even in the television programs. They now crony newspapers that enjoyed an overnight increase in circulation were the Inquirer, Malaya, and the People's Journal. 
English, and Filipino continue to be the major media of literature. Literature as a venue for social, political, economic, religious discussions, and a vehicle for personal thoughts and feelings has become more marked. Literary themes cover a wide range of subjects, most outstanding among which are existentialism and the search for identity in varying levels and settings. Deception and violence perpetuated by those in power, grinding poverty especially in the countryside and in some cities, nationalism, tenant landlord relationship, human rights violation, and the experiences of overseas Filipino workers. As we engage in technology more and more, we create and discover more existing forms of expressive culture as well. We have a wide range of resources through the internet and this gave opportunities to people, especially the youth, to begin writing and expressing their thoughts. A perfect example would be the Wattpad. It became popular to the Filipino youth in 2006. 21st century learners are demanded to be ICT inclined to compete with the style and format of writing as well. New codes or lingos are used to add flavor in the literary pieces produced nowadays. Literature continues to change with society and although we are in the 21st century and are binded with technology, authors are still trying to address absolute human questions in new ways and therefore reconcile them with the ever-changing technology that surrounds us. Hence, the birth of the different 21st century literary genres. In the new educational system that the Philippines is currently under which is the K-12 program. Its students are also entitled to learn new literary genres that we have in the 21st century. In this guide, we will find the different characteristics of the 21st century literature in the Philippines and in their genres along with the representative text that tackles the relevance to our current situation. Such will be discussed in the succeeding modules that we will have in the comments. And there, I hope you have been fully equipped with what you need to know with the evolution of the Philippine literature. So to check your understanding, you will have to answer the activity, Who is Who? You will need to identify the author of the following literary pieces written by the illustrators. Write the letter of your correct answer on your note. Here are the choices. We have letter A, Jose Rizal, B, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, C, Reciano Lopez Heine. And here are some of the literary pieces. One, sa mga Pilipino. We have Mi, Multi, Mi Ultimo Adios, Filipinas Dentro de Shantanios, Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Lupa, Lahi Hadal Fraile, El Filibusterismo, Kaingat Kayo, Ang Frey Botod, Sobre la Indolencia de los Filipinos, and the Salan and Tokso. Next, under Characterize Me, you will complete the table below by writing the characteristics of the following literature during the pre-Spanish period. Do not forget to copy and fill out the table on your note. So there we have the legends, the folk tales, the epic age, and of course, the folk songs. We also have the next activity which is the thinker's view. Here, you will analyze the sample Filipino folk tale in the pre-Spanish period and answer the following questions. So let me read to you the folk tale entitled The Sun and the Moon. In the olden days, like the moon, the sun had also star children which were yellowish in color, very bright, and very hot. The star children of the moon, however, were reddish and cold. That moon was scared that his stars would wither and die if they played with the star 
children of the sun. The moon suggested to the sun that they kill the children who were crowding the heavens with their number. When the sun had killed her children, the moon will be hid behind the clouds. In the evening, when the clouds faded, the moon stars appeared. This angered the sun, so he gave chase to the moon. Thus, when he overtakes the moon, we have the so-called eclipse. Every morning, the sun kills the moon, stars that he catches. Until now, this chase continues because the moon still continues. Now, for your comprehension check, let us try to answer the following questions. Number one, what is the concern of the moon regarding his stars? Two, why was the moon, why does the moon anger the sun? And number three, what particular phenomenon is described in the Philippine book? So you will be answering that for your book. And now, for the next assessment, the closer look, you are going to write three words that will highlight the message of the excerpt from one of the most famous literary pieces during the Spanish time, which is the Passion. Again, let me read to you. Kasaysayan ng Pasyong Mahal ng Esokristong Panginoon natin. Copyright in 1949 by Ignacio Luna and Sons. Panalangin sa Diyos o Diyos sa kalangitan hari ng sangkalupaan. Sa Diyos na walang kapantay, mabait, bumhang, maalam, at puno ng karunungan. Ikaw ang amang tibobos ng nanguli ng lubos. Amang di matapos-tapos, maawi pa pagkukog sa taong lupat alamot. Iyong ipulot sa amin, Diyos amang maawot mo, mangyari ng amin dalitin. Okay. So again, you will just be writing C. Three words. For the following assessment, saying a song, you will now analyze and interpret the emotions of Filipinos and situations of the country found in each paragraph of the song Ang Bayan Po, which is one of the songs in the post ed Salman era. Now, for you to have an idea of the emotions and meaning of the song, I'll be singing it for you. Ready? Ang Bayan Kong Pilipinas Lupain ang ginto at pulakla Pag-ibig na sa kanyang palay Nag-alay ng ganda at nilang At sa kanyang yumi at ganda Dayuhan ay nahalina Bayan ko binihag ka nasa dlag sa dosa. Ibon mang may layang lumipad, kulungin mo at umiiyak. Bayan pa kayang sakdal dilag, ang di magnasang makaalpad. Pilipinas kong minumutya, pugad ng luha at dalita, aking agi ka, makita kang sakalaya. Okay, and finally, let's have a look at all of you have learned today. So, please remember that Brick Spanish literature is characterized by legends, folk tales, the epic age, and the folk songs. The propaganda movement, 1872 to 1896, was spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class like Jose Rizal, Marcel del Pilar, Luciano Lopez Haina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Panganiban, and Pedro Paterno. 
from the American regime, Americans influence Filipino writers to write using the English language. English as a medium of instruction was introduced in the school as the intellectual language of education. In the period of activism, campus newspapers were written to show their protest. They held pens and wrote on placards in red paint the equivalent of the word makibaka or to dare. Period of the New Society poems dealt with patience, regard for native culture, customs, and the beauties of nature and surroundings. The period of the Third Republic was romantic and revolutionary, and Paul's Ed Sawan noticed in the new Filipino songs, in the newspapers, in the speeches, and even in the television. For the evaluation, this will also be your first performance output. I want you to write a 2 to 3 paragraph essay as a reflection to this question. As a grade 11 Filipino learner, in what way can you show a sense of adaptability to the diverse Philippine literary history? To elaborate the question, now that you have a clearer understanding of the evolution of the Philippine literature, how can you show that you are open and willing to learn new things, take on new challenges, and make adjustments to apply such learnings to the current situation? Maybe you can establish a connection between the things you have learned and how important they are to you as a 21st century learner is studying literature. And here ends my discussion for Lesson 1. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to be with you till our next learning venture. Again, this is Teacher Teen and please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye everyone! Have a nice day!